All right, welcome back everybody. It's J.R. Flatter, the host of The Secrets of Leadership Coaching. And our special guest today is Kylie Dare. And Kylie, I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, you know yourself much better than I ever, do, ever would. So. Yeah, so my name is Kylie Dare and I'm a um, executive coach and leadership coach. And I'm also a non-executive director. So I'm based in Newcastle, Australia. Uh, in the state of New South Wales. So we're a coastal town, um, the beach is just down the road um, and close to the Hunter Valley, which international travellers always seem to know our wine region of the Hunter Valley, JR. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, what does a non-executive director do? So a non-executive director is not, inv not involved in day-to-day -day activities and so not involved the, with the day-to-day -day running of the firm. So um, to give you a little bit more information about me, I guess there's kind of two parts. There is um, pre-disability, so pre-2011 and post-2011. So pre-2011, I, um, I was a partner in a medium-sized accounting firm, so a director and an owner of that business. I had a full client base. I had um, you know, a team that I was responsible for between Newcastle and Sydney. And um, I lost all of that almost overnight due to my disability. And that happened in 2011. And it was devastating, to say the least, uh, life changing for my for me and for my family. And it happened just so quickly. Um, so I was forced to retire and to leave my career. And I felt like I'd reached kind of a pinnacle in my career, but I certainly hadn't achieved all the things that I wanted to. I was 40 years old with two small boys. And so I, I spent eight years at home and I, I was battling during that time with my functional impairment, cognitive impairment due to the medication that I was on and still am to a degree. And I was continually trying to find a way to work again. And I knew that that would never be as a partner and running the firm and, and running a team and, and advising clients. But I wanted to find a purpose in work again. You know, we've spoken about this, you know, there is the purpose that you have with your family and your friends and the people you, that you're close to, but work gives you an important purpose as well. So I've got very strict parameters that I can work within. And I was really fortunate that when I um, did feel like I could start again in a, in a you know, confined way, that I was invited back as a non-executive director. So to sit on the board of the same company that I was previously a director and shareholder of, and to be involved in vision and strategy and performance improvement and achieving the strategic initiatives that we've set out for the Australian firm. And one of the really nice sweeteners to that was being involved in the firm's leadership programs and their bespoke programs. Um, and the first group was a group of eight women. Um, so it was Helen Wiseman, who you know, JR mm -hmm, and myself, mm -hmm. and eight women. And I'd never mm. been in a situation like that before. I'd never been in a room with all women talking leadership. And it was incredibly special. And my job, Helen was the lead facilitator. I was the coach and the conduit between the board and the program. And three of those women went on to become partner. All the rest were promoted. Mm. There are a few that are so close to partnership, it's, it's, it's really exciting. And um, now we're in the second cohort. So 16 men and women across Sydney and Newcastle. Um, so 
Helen, and the reason I mentioned Helen, JR, is because she led me to you. <laughs> and she rang me one day and she said, this guy I know, JR Flatter, is doing a training course for coaching. And I think you should do it. Mm. Enjoy your insight. You should do this. And she said, um, you know, the, it was the first training course that you did. So 70 hours in Australia, 7 to 8 a.m., <laughs> four mornings, five mornings a week, Tuesday to Saturday. Um, and she said, there's a catch. You have to decide right now. <laughs> so, you know, here I am back to work only 18 months thinking, how am I going to do this? And so I had a conversation with my husband and two boys and they said, you said if you ever got to work again, you wanted to give back and you wanted to make a meaningful difference in people's lives. This seems to be the way that you're going to do that. So I did. And I became certified out of that program. And I'm now coaching. And I'm coaching all different generations, all different levels of leadership, um, coaching people in the US. Um, you know, there's just such a broad range of people that I'm now working with and working on their vision for success. So this mm. to me feels like what I was meant to do. Wow, what a great story. Um, so when I listen to you describe your background, it's kind of intimidating. Do I need to have that kind of background to be a good coach? I think the answer to that lies in the participants in the 125 course. Um, there is such a broad range of people with all different experience from all different industries. Some people are on a pathway of finding, becoming better leaders themselves. Some people do wanna go on and coach. Others are human resource um, individuals who want to look at bringing a, cult, a, a coaching culture into their firm. So the answer is no. I don't think there are any parameters. I think you've got, you need a willingness and ability to be a leader and to explore how you can be a better person. You know, I think it's affected all facets of my life. I think I've grown as a person, as a friend, as a daughter, as a sister, um, I'm definitely different in the boardroom um, mm. and, you know, and, and grown as a coach. And I think now being involved in the second training course, you know, there's, there's points in time which I feel, feel like I need to pinch myself because here I am sitting in Australia in my small office, in my home, running my small business, um, and I feel like I'm sitting in the US in a worldwide classroom. And, you know, and, and because every form of diversity, I think, is represented, you know, gender, age, religion, ethnicity, disability versus ability, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The depth of conversation, the layers of that, um, and, and therefore this significant growth journey that you go on is incredibly special. Mm. Wow. So our listeners are our peers. And so what advice would you give to someone thinking about going down this path, either to be a coach, to grow in their leadership, to become a better person? What advice would you give them? I'd say Take the brave step. I think that, you know, if an opportunity knocks on my door now, I'll work out how I can do it. And I do it within restraints. So take the step, embrace the opportunity, 
show up um, willing to be vulnerable and willing to grow. Um, and, I, and I think that, you know, you, what, what you will find is that your resilience grows as a part of that. And, and I think as I was going through the first 70 hours, you know, I felt like I was in this uncomfortable space of growth all the time. I knew that I was growing significantly. This time in the second training, um, it's not the same, you know, uncomfortable space of growth, but you just, you can run the same course with different participants and it's the participants that you learn from. The practicality of what, what you do in the 2RL course, JR, is, you know, from day dot, day one, we are coaching. And there's, um, we're doing it sometimes um, within a group of three with someone observing, and we're doing it sometimes um, in, the, in the classroom, in the virtual classroom. And um, we're becoming better coaches day by day. So, just embrace it. Yeah, I love your use of the word vulnerable because it, it happens so many times that you're practice coaching and I'm using quotation marks with my fingers and suddenly a real world problem is there in the room and you're the coach and that person wants your help. Yeah. I mean, it happens so often and, and you really have to be ready for that. Mm. But it's part of the joy of coaching too, to be able to be part of that. Absolutely. Agreed. So one of the requirements, we are called the secrets of leadership coaching after all. Uh, to be a distinguished guest is you have to give us one of your secrets. But tell us one of your secrets of successful coaching. I think my secret is um, to turn the mirror on yourself. So um, continually um, examining how you're performing as a coach. We ask of our leaders that they look in the mirror and, and, and you know, is what they're saying really what they want to do? Is, is what they say they're going to do really what is going to happen once we walk outside the room? And I think, you know, turning the mirror on ourselves is, 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 is looking at how we're performing. Um, I think our greatest lessons come from our mistakes. And one of mine was um, I, I didn't transition into a coaching session properly. So um, I had gone from a director meeting into a coaching session and I didn't show up the way that my leader needed, to me, lead, needed me to on that particular day. And the coaching session didn't go badly. It just didn't go as well as it could. And so I rang that person and I said, that didn't go as well as it could and that's on me. That's my responsibility to you. That's the onus I have. Would it be possible for us to meet again in a couple of days? And, and this person said, yes, and I'm very grateful that they did. And I think that was a real pivot point in our partnership, um, I showed vulnerability, I showed humility. And um, I think that, um, you know, it did create this, this bond within the partnership that I have with this individual. Um, as coaches, we have the ICF guidelines and the ethics and the values and the competency, and we have all the training with you JR, and then we walk into a room and we are coaching an individual and we need to respond to the way that the individual needs us on that particular day on, at that particular time. And we are continually changing course, changing pace, sometimes slowing it right down, using different tools, different, using different methodology, to get the very best from the people that we work with. And 
So I do think there's a lot of examining ourselves and, and how we're going. Um, and I think that that's where the second training course, you know, having two back to back has really helped me in that I know I am continually upskilling all the time and therefore I am presenting my best to the people that I work with. Great. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, last thing before we let you get on with your day, your morning. Um, morning. Give us a couple names of future guests that we might invite that would be useful to our listeners. Mm. The first person I'd say is Helen Wiseman. Um, and the reason I say Helen is, uh, firstly, she's a phenomenal sponsor and supporter. You know, every time I meet someone who knows Helen, they tell the same story of the door she's opened for them. You know, the door of opportunity she opened for me. Um, and I think that the, the value in it is the network that she has um, built and how she's strategically built that network. So I think that's valuable to someone who is growing their own business. Um, and the second person I would say is um, Lauren Parker. Lauren is a, a Paralympic champion. She's a, um, she, she does triathlons. Um, she is our gold medal hopeful for um, the Tokyo Olympics. <clears throat> Lauren's disability happened in 2017. So, you know, in a few small, in a, a, a small space of time, Lauren has gone from becoming a paraplegic to on the pathway to win, win a gold medal. And, and the reason I put Lauren's name forward is she's a beautiful human being, um, but she is also so goal focused, laser focused, um, and she's audacious in the goals that she sets. And, and when she sets them, she is focused on gold and gold only. And I admire the way that she is able to um, turn up for, to an event, regardless of the pain that she's in and everything that's going on in her life and perform at her absolute best and because of the goal setting ability. All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, it's been wonderful. Pleasure. Um, it's always good to see you. And look it forward is, to seeing you. Too. 